All right, let's do this. We're all set up. You know, I always got to get hydrated with my Herbalife to kick things off, get rolling. Keep it right here in case I get all worked up and I need another drink. So I had a couple things planned for today. One second. Sometimes people walk in, so we got to stop talking so we don't scare them away. So I had a couple things planned for today, then I had a lot of questions coming in, a lot of things people wanted me to talk about, so we kind of shifted gears a little bit, kind of put it all together, and that's the way it's going to go today. So one second, just going to wait another minute here. All right, we are all good. We're all set up. So we're still start at you know two fifteen. But if you just saw a couple, we just did a couple of videos of Tyson. Me and Tyson were finishing our workout, so you know shit gets in the way. We can't interrupt our workout. So here we are, episode number eighteen. Steve says there's a, a, a lot of questions that you guys have been asking. So like I said, so we switched things up here. We are on episode number 18. So today we're going we're gonna to talk about you're doing, maybe you're doing great in the gym. You're starting to get some results. But then what's the number one thing that is preventing you from taking it to the next level? Then we're going to talk about what is the greatest learning resource to guarantee your success in the gym and in life. We're also going to talk about how much weight you should lose per week. How much should you actually weigh for your height and whatever age and all that stuff. And all kinds of other self-development, peak free styles you've come to expect in these shows. As you know... We do get into some fitness and nutrition stuff, but we go a lot deeper and further into mindset and motivation and stuff like that, which is then going to lead to the fitness results and, and the weight loss results and all that stuff. So we're going to start off with, like I was saying, you know, you, you have, we have a ton of get to get to this week. So what's the number one self-improvement tool? Are you coming to disturb my workout? I mean, my, my video here? You better get out of here. You better get out of here. The Russian invasion. Go, 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 go. Close the door. So we have a ton to get to. What is the number one self-improvement tool? How many pounds do you lose a week? Like I said, a little bit about kind of body image type stuff and a new advanced nutrition experiment that I have been fine-tuning and working on and doing myself recently. I'm going to let you know how that's going and what, what I plan to do with that. A new project that I'm working on. That I've, and then uh, at the end... I'm going to tell you about a, a, a second new project that I'm working on that's kind of a secret. So the question that pretty much I got just last night was, so, you know, kind of ties into everything I was planning talking anyway, so it's going to all tie together. It was, Steve, any insight and experience in your fitness career, how to stay motivated and positive, replacing unhealthy addictions, foods, drugs, pills, depression, with a healthy addiction like food and fitness? I'm motivated for a few months, but it always comes and goes. I, I've been clean for three years now, and it's not an issue any longer. But the mind always plays tricks. Thanks. So that's a, this is a great question, and like I said, it ties into everything. If you've been it, watching these episodes each week, week by week, this is the kind of stuff that we always go into. This is exactly, we've answered these questions sometimes, and I'm actually going to give you a recap of some of the weeks that, you, some of the episodes you can go back to look on for different topics, so you can kind of get a little deeper into some things we're going to touch on today because we've kind of went in hard on some of these topics already, but we're going to kind of go into them and I'll tell you which episodes you can go back to to find those topics to hear those segments again because some of the stuff is going to help you out. It's going to change your life. So if you've been following these weekly live broadcasts of mine, you see, like I said, we really talk about the actual training or fitness. We do cover training and lots of nutrition topics, but we go a lot deeper than that. So I've covered these in great detail in previous episodes. I'll tell you a little bit later which episodes cover those topics. But this problem, as almost all problems, starts in your freaking head. That's where these problems start that, that this person was mentioning in this question. You know, back to our weekly word game. So again, you're doing great. You're getting results. What is the number one thing preventing you from taking it to the next level? Give me two words. The number one thing that is preventing you from taking it to the next level, and whoever can tell me those two words, is going to get that t-shirt. And Raj, you are not eligible for this because you win a fucking t-shirt every week. But we're going to have a different contest that you can win. A much bigger than a t-shirt contest coming up. I'm going to tell you about a little bit later. So, you're, again, you're getting some results. What is the number one thing preventing you from taking it to the next level? Two words. Two words I need. Who's going to tell me the two words? Give me the two words. You've got, you got like five seconds because we've got to keep moving. Anyone have anything? Anyone have anything? The thing that is stopping you. Last week, we said one of the things that was preventing you from reaching your goals was 
jealousy and jealous people and jealous fuckers out there. But this week, we're talking about something else, something that's actually preventing you from going just to the next level, something that you're already getting results. What's preventing you from going to the next level? Two words, two words. Anyone have it? I'm going to go in five seconds and then no one gets a chance to win that t-shirt. You will get a chance later because we have a couple more things that you can come up with to win a t-shirt. Is anyone even going to guess it? Give me something on there. Two words. The number one thing that is preventing you from taking your results to the next level. You're getting results. You're getting great results. You're getting awesome results. Unbelievable results. In a short amount of time, I'm trying to build this up for you guys. What are the two words that are stopping you from taking it to the next level? Counting in five seconds and we're moving on. I'm going to say it and you lost your chance for that t-shirt. Four. I'm going to check here to see if anyone's commenting on there. No. Three, two, one. And the two words that are stopping you from going to the next level. Someone put something in there. Mind. No, that's not. Myself is, is on the right path. But I, first of all, I said two words. You both gave me one word. So you both don't know what the hell you're doing. It's two words. But it's further than just myself. Sled control. You're starting to put them in there, so I'll give you another half a second to, to put it on, to try and get it in there. Two words that is stopping you. You're getting, coming along the right track now, but it's a little more than just myself. Willpower, no. The two words are perfection and no. Are self-sabotage. That is the number one thing Last week we said those jealous fuckers that we talked about last week, they were holding you back. But I said, I told you last week, there was something even above that, and that is self-sabotage that I see causing people to go on a fucking roller coaster ride all the time in, in life, in work, in the gym, everywhere, in, the, in all areas of their life. Self-sabotage is a bit different than making excuses. People who make excuses usually get no results, and they end up quitting before they even give themselves a freaking chance. But self-sabotage, this person is, is capable of cutting out all the bullshit excuses and get amazing results, almost to the point of the next level, almost to some dream world shit where they get to the best shape of their life or their ultimate dream world goal results. They get that close to taking it to that next level where it's going to take them there, and then they stop it from happening. They stop it from happening themselves. People might think about their past or the way they were brought up or the, the bullshit their parents might have ingrained in their, in their fucking head or maybe the, maybe the news that has brainwashed them with, with the agenda and propaganda and fucking hate that's on there. Or maybe your entire culture has just told you, this is the way it should be done, and this is how it is. Life is hard. Life should be fucking brutal. But, you know, be grateful for, for what you have. You have no idea how good you have it. This is all bullshit. Self-sabotage really doesn't, doesn't happen intentionally or even fucking consciously. It's deviously burned into your fucking mind and your soul and your belief systems from all the things that I just mentioned. You know, fuck that. You are in control. Don't, don't become a product of your environment if, if your environment was infested with a bunch of fucking dumbasses that are telling you that this is the way life is, this is the way it needs to be. Be happy for what you have, be grateful for what you have. That's bullshit. Because usually people are going to you know, be somewhere there where you don't want to be. So why would you be happy with that if you're not where you want to be? That doesn't make any sense. So, so then these things that you, you have been conditioned to in your life, sometimes as early as a young freaking child before you can even speak or walk, they're just drilled into you and conditioned that way. Now they control you without you even fucking knowing it. You start losing some weight, you start moving up at your job, and, and you do some stupid shit to prevent yourself from taking it to the next level. And you probably don't even know you're doing it, you probably don't even know what's happening, you might not even know why it's happening, but that's what you need to figure out. You, you might feel like you can't handle the success, or you're not good enough, or what, what will people say once I get there? What will people think? The people think I changed, that I'm different, they won't like me anymore, or I don't have it in me to get to the next level, or, or even fucking worse, you're conditioned to think that you don't need to go to the next level, that you're good enough where you are, or you don't even fucking deserve it. That's what you start telling yourself in your head. You don't deserve to, to be in the best shape of your life, to be an ass kicker in the office, or at work, or in your business, or whatever. You know, my deep answer, my deep philosophical answer to all of that is fuck that. You can go to the next level. You should go to the next level. You need to go to the next fucking level, and you certainly fucking deserve to go to the next level. Fuck that is what I have to say about that. Be happy with what you have is bullshit. Like I recently said, there's no such thing as a plateau. There, there's no such thing as maintenance, a maintenance program in the gym. Those are self-limiting, self-sabotaging, upper limit preventing web of freaking excuses. You know, you either improve or you die. Take your pick. Improve or die. Be behavior is said, is, is said to be self-sabotaging when it creates 
problems and interferes with your long-term goals. So the most common self-sabotaging is procrastination, medication or drugs and alcohol and prescription drugs and prescription medication that people fucking pump themselves full of for no reason just to stop themselves from going to that next level because they're afraid to go to the next level. Comfort eating is another way of self-sabotage, which we see in the gym all the time holding you back. You get right on the verge of going to that next level, which that next level is going to take you to the fucking body of your dreams and you start just wolfing down a whole bunch of shit that you haven't had in months because you're almost afraid to go there or think you don't deserve to go there. And then it even goes even further, deeper into you know, self-injury and even whatever, even technically really suicide could be the, the end all of it, whatever. So these acts seem helpful when you're doing them sometimes maybe, or they're comforting or whatever, but they're ultimately digging you deeper in that fucking hole, especially when you're doing this shit repeatedly on a, on a whacked out self-limiting roller coaster. It's just craziness. So people aren't always aware of their self sabotage, you know, as, as the effects of their behavior might not show it for a, a while, but unfortunately connecting that behavior, you know, self-defeating consequences is no guarantee that they're going to, they're going to stop the behavior. So they're just going to keep going up and down, up and down. You get there, you're ready to take it to the next level and bam, you stop yourself for some reason. So now we're going to play another game. Give me one word. This leads to our next word game. We love these word games, right? Cause we love giving away t-shirts. One word that is your greatest learning tool to overcome self-sabotage. One word that's your greatest learning tool to overcome this self-sabotage we're talking about. Can someone tell me the one word? You got like five seconds to come up with it. One word that is your greatest learning tool to overcome self-sabotage. We're also going to go into a list of several other things you could do to overcome it. But what I think, what I know, at least from my experiences, is one thing. One learning tool. Fuck. <laughs> you could just say fuck, fuck this, fuck that, but that's not the word. Unfortunately, that's not the word. That usually is my go-to word. Just had to check the door. We don't want to scare the civilians away. One word. Give me a word. Give me a word. You got five seconds. Not become content with where you are. I'm pretty sure, Vanessa, that that's a little more than one word. That's like one, two, three, four, five, six, whatever, something words. One word that is your greatest learning tool to overcome self-sabotage. Consistency, no. Motivation, no. These are all good words, but this is not what we're looking for. A little actually different path and a little deeper than that. Vanessa Williams, lol is not the word I'm looking for. Goals, belief, these are all good stuff, but no. Results, no. All right, you got the last three seconds. You guys are a little bit on the wrong path. You're staying with too much of those generic words that we use. We're looking for something a little deeper, a learning tool, something a little more that you're going to be able to learn from. You have three seconds because I give you a huge hint. Two seconds, one second, and passion, no. The number one thing that you are going to use as your tool to overcome self-sabotage and really overcome anything and also take things to the next level is, oh, someone put it in, knowledge so close, but you're going to get knowledge from failure. Failure is the number one thing that's you're going to be your greatest learning tool to overcome freaking self-sabotage. Failure is the word. Someone's going to say it now. You guys always put the word in after I say it. Like, oh no, I typed that before you posted it. Bullshit. Whatever. So I've not failed at anything in my life for many, many fucking years. Now, now anyone that knows me knows I have obviously made a lot of mistakes in my time in that amount of time, these last, and you know, in, in the last whatever, a couple of decades or whatever, and fucked up a lot of shit. I've done some bad shit in my life, especially in my earlier years, when I was in a self-sabotage stage, if you want to call it. Probably around when I came home from the Marine Corps is when I started figuring shit out on how to take that failure, flip that shit, and make it my little bitch. Now, nothing I do, I consider a failure anymore. I consider them all small victories. You're still guessing. We gave the word already, Vanessa Williams. So... Listen, you fuck up, you lose, you fail, you even do something clearly wrong, intentionally wrong even sometimes, you need to figure out what caused this undesirable outcome, you need to acknowledge it, apologize if necessary, and make adjustments from preventing that same fuck up from occurring again, or that perceived failure from happening again. Adapt and overcome, move forward, and don't make the same fucking mistake again. That is a major victory, a learning, a learning experience, learning from your fucking mistakes. 
The, the greatest successes in the world, the, biz, the biggest businesses, the greatest athletes, the most fit people in the world were all born and created off of many, many disastrous fucking failures. Failure after failure after failure. Shit, when I, when I was a teenager, when I first started doing training, like 15, 18, 19, 20 years ago, I'd be sitting down in my parents' basement with some sticks and freaking rocks and bullshit, no real equipment, some dangerous shit, trying to make, create a bench, putting a, 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 this basket, a board on top of a basket for a bench, for a bench press, trying to come up with exercise and different balance exercise. The amount of times I fell and split my fucking head open just trying to figure out and create new things. Those were failures and failures and failures, figuring out what is gonna work, what's not gonna work. I'm actually gonna go into that deeper in, a little bit later about this 10 day little, little test I'm doing on myself here. It's all a test. It's gonna fail. It's been failing. I've been working on something for like six months, the last six months, last year, this little 10 day project that I'm working on. And failure is all over the place. And then fucking eventually you learn from it, you prevent it from reoccurring, you stop being a little bitch, you adapt and overcome and make shit happen. It's simple. Turn a negative into a freaking positive. Some other ways to flip that shit, that, that, that shit on the self-sabotage, are don't dwell on the, oh, if only this, or if only that, or if I would have done this, or if I would have done this at this time, or this point in my life, I would be here or there or whatever. It's bullshit. You, you, you think you would have been much better, but it's it definitely bullshit because... You don't even know what would have happened if you, got, if you did do this or that that you're dwelling on for who knows. Some people dwell on shit for months and years or their whole freaking life. They go into the grave still, oh, what if with this, what if that. Get over that shit. Learn from the mistake, adapt and overcome, move on, correct the mistake and make shit happen. Turn the negative into a positive. Don't dwell on it. You don't even know. Whatever that thing you think, oh, if I did this. You might have ended up more fucked up if you did that, if, if you, then you didn't do it, then you are now. So who knows, it might not have been a good fit for you anyway, whatever it was, and you will probably create a better opportunity off of, that, off of the failure of that loss opportunity with the new gained wisdom of that fucking failure, if that makes sense to you. It makes sense in my brain, so that's all that matters to me, really. So learning from the failure is much more useful learning tool to me than even a freaking college education. It is real world learning experience that could take you from bam, from nothing to like extreme success in anything you do. Because now you know what not to do. And then also you could learn from yourself, your own, your own failures. And then also look at other people in that same field. They're doing the same things you're doing. The same, you know, you're looking for weight loss. Look at some failures that other people have done. Learn from their failures. Learn from your failures. And boom, it's an unbeatable freaking combination. Let's see, what do we got here? Mental traps, yes. All right, let's keep rolling. So the next thing to do to overcome this self-sabotage is don't let your fucking controls, your, your, the, your thoughts control you. We did, we, this was one episode we did a, few, a couple months ago. I'll go over that list again later. Perception is reality. Your thoughts are real. Everything starts with a thought. Nothing happens without a thought. It all comes from up here. So if you're thinking that you suck, then guess what? You fucking suck. If you think you're fat, you are fat. I don't care what you look like. If that's what you think, if that's what you see when you look in the mirror, from, because that's what's in your mind, that's what you are. It is reality. So it all comes to your thought. That's why we say no negativity allowed when you come in this gym. One of our 15 core values, if you've been reading them when you come in, we went over them last week. When you have those thoughts or those feelings or emotions, don't try to su suppress them. Let them out. Get them out of your system. Write it down. Go lift some weights. Go bust your ass in the boot camp class. Go to the fucking rifle range. Punch a fucking heavy bag. Unleash the fucking beast. Let out the lion. Let out your freaking roar. Just roar. Let it out. Release that shit for the good. Use a transference of energy. Use your powers for good rather than, you know, before you bottle it up and hold it back and it erupts into this negative explosion, digging you deeper and deeper into that freaking self-sabotage, miserable freaking life and existence that you're in. You know, like anxiety, stop procrastinating. Stop putting shit off until tomorrow because tomorrow doesn't exist or tomorrow will become a jail cell or a fucking graveyard you keep putting shit off until tomorrow. Get up and go, get shit done, make shit happen, just fucking move. Just get up and fucking move. This is what creates my nonstop energy is my need for action. I need to overcome the anxiety like we said a couple weeks ago with action. It's the same thing with self-sabotage. It's what counteracts and, and overpowers self-sabotage. It's just get up and freaking move. Action to you know, counter, counter attack the anxiety, the procrastination, the complacency, the failure, and turn that failure into a freaking victory by taking action, by moving, just getting up. And the most important thing, other than the failure, the, ne the next most important thing to overcome this self-sabotage is creating habits 
and daily rituals that cause momentum and then ride that momentum. Ride that fucking momentum for the rest of your life. Just ride the wave of the momentum because momentum is only momentum as long as it has momentum. The second you stop it, the momentum is gone and you bring, bam, bam, you're starting from scratch again. So structure is control and control is fucking power. That's what you need to do. Structure your day. P- create habits and daily rituals. I have tons of them and that's pretty much exactly what we do. What, if those people just finished the Game Changer program, exactly what we do. We just finished the second round of our Game Changer program, which is our advanced nutrition, accountability, and mindset lifestyle transformation program. Not even training. It has not, nothing to do with training, but they, everyone that follows the protocol and follows the rituals that we set gets ridiculous results in there. It's in addition to their regular boot camp and boxing program. And I guarantee it will completely change your life. Like it's completely changed the lives of people who joined the Game Changer program. You know, I knew it was going to be insanely effective, but after seeing the physical and even more the mental and the, and the lifestyle and transformation of these people, the way they're walking around and carrying themselves, their head up, their shoulder back, their chest out like they're fucking Marines, you know, even my expectations were exceeded. In, in eight short weeks, this program has literally reversed years and years of self-sabotage and doubt and lack of priority and fucking negativity. Those that fully committed to the program are not the same person walking around today that they were just eight weeks ago. They are completely different freaking beasts, completely different animals. So more into details on accountability and nutrition. So let's go into that since that's what we're on, which is also a part of the Game, game Changer program, which is you know, this, this actually ties into what I've been talking about today is someone asked, how much weight should I lose per week? And then people are always talking about, lo- complaining about how much weight they lost each week or how much should they weigh? What should they look like for their height, their weight, their age, their freaking, I don't know, blood type and shit like that? Because this person said this and I heard this on here. I heard this on the internet. I heard a lot of shit on the internet. Whatever. Don't even believe everything you hear, first of all. One time I was in the, when I used to work in a commercial gym years ago, I was holding a banana and it was not open yet. And this other trainer in the gym that was working there with me said to me, what are you doing? You've been looking like you're getting in great shape lately. What have you been doing? I said, I read this a study on the internet. They said, if you eat your banana peel, it's going to increase your testosterone by 37%. It was an old Yugoslavian study or some shit I made up. He's like, oh, holy shit. Here, let you. I said, yeah, it's great. Try it. I gave it to him. He was about to bite it. I didn't let him do it. But the point is, don't believe everything you hear about what you should weigh, how much pounds you should lose per week, all this other bullshit. Stop overthinking it. Trust the process. Again, acknowledge any mistakes and don't repeat them. I hate when someone makes the same fucking mistake for like the 17th time and then everyone comes to the rescue to be to save the day and they're like, oh, tomorrow is a new day. Just wipe the slate clean and just get started. It's the 17th fucking time you did it. You need to learn from that shit. Learn from that failure and make it a positive and move on from it. If you didn't learn from the failure, then it is a fucking failure. So you need to learn from it. You'll never fail in your life ever again. You will just win and win and win. Fucking victory on top of victory on top of victory, taking your shit to the next level. My goal, I always tell people, fuck getting better. I I don't want to be better tomorrow than I was today. I want to be better one second from now than I am right now. Every second better than the last second before that. Fuck that. That's how you need to, that's a mentality you need to have. Constant, constant improvement. Never staying still. Never staying in the same place, getting complacent and, and, and plateaus and all that other bullshit. So how much weight do you lose in, in a week? Let's see. It, listen, to, listen to this list. It depends on how much weight you have to lose. What is your goal? Not anyone else's fucking goal. Your goal. Your, your goal weight, you know, what percentage of your body weight do you need to lose? Have you been training already for a long time? Did you just start training? How much weight have you gained? Or how much weight have you lost in the past week? How much weight have you gained or lost in the past month, in the past year? How many calories do you eat a day? How many carbs do you get a day? How much protein do you get a day? How much fat? How much sodium? How much water do you intake? How many hours are you awake? What time do you go to sleep? What time do you wake up? How many hours a week do you work? How long are you on feet? Are you active at work? So now, as you can see, if you took all these fucking answers and it would greatly change the answer, the answer for everyone about how much weight should I lose in a week? Because there's so many factors that you could technically put into it. This would be an impossible algorithm, even for Bill fucking Gates. He wouldn't even be able to solve that shit. So that's why there's no real answer for that is how much weight should someone lose per week or something like that. As a broad baseline, you know, we always just say one pound a week would be great. And you can't complain about that. Anything extra would be considered a freaking bonus. So if you lose, listen to these numbers. If you lose seven pounds in say two weeks, then you lose no pounds in week three, you have still lost seven pounds in three weeks. That would be more than two pounds per week. You need to start thinking bigger. Look at the big picture. On the, on the flip side, everyone is different. You might lose zero pounds for two weeks. Then you might lose six pounds over weeks three and four. You lost 
six pounds in four weeks. You lost a pound and a half per week. You need to look at the big picture, not like, oh my God, this week I didn't lose any fucking weight. I'm going to bash my head on a freaking wall. No, think fucking bigger. Don't sweat the small shit and don't fucking overthink it. If, if you're doing things that you need to be doing, get in here four to five times a freaking week, find the nutrition program with discipline, and most importantly, maintaining a positive mindset, the freaking magic will happen. And then learning from those failures. You fail, learn from it. Don't just say, okay, now next week, I'm going to do the same failure again. I'm going to put my little sob story on Facebook. I'm going to have 17 fucking people tell me, oh, don't worry about it. You can get past it. Tomorrow's a new day. That's bullshit. Learn from it one time and move on and then become better. Take it to the next level. So you know, if, if, also, say, if you say you have 100 pounds to lose, you've already came here, you lost 55 pounds in like whatever, four months, five months, six months, 55 pounds. First of all, you do that, you're fucking awesome, okay? And anyone who sees you regularly will notice that they'll be telling you this and that, you know, your friends at least. We know those jealous fuckers are going to say, oh, you need to live a little, you, need, you look too skinny, are you sick, do you have cancer? They'll say some shit just to fucking drag you down. Fuck them, we're not talking about them, you know? But someone else that doesn't really know you might look at you and think, oh, look at that overweight person, look at that fat person, right? Or whatever bullshit they might come with. So first of all, fuck them. They don't know what you've achieved so far. They don't know your life. They don't know what you've been through. They don't know how much weight you lost. So to, to us, we're going to look at you and be like, holy shit, you look so skinny. So don't worry about what the fuck people think about what you look like. Worry about what you know, what you've been through, where you've come from so far, what you've achieved so far, how far you come, how much weight you lost, and what amount of time. That's what fucking matters. What's in your head. It's all in your head. Don't give a shit what anyone thinks about it, except for your real circle of people, probably, which is your family here in the Peak Freak Gym. So, you know, the, the same... Same thing, you shouldn't prejudge people the same way. You know, most people have some fucked up shit going on in their life. They really just need some help and support. So I guess my side point is to just don't be a judgmental douchebag like those people that see someone out there and talk shit about them because they're overweight. That person might have just lost 150 pounds, asshole. You don't know what they're doing. You don't know what their life is like. You don't know anything about them. So like, the, you know, those gossiping little jealous little fake bitches we talked about last week. That's one thing. I don't even remember what I was talking about. You guys got me all fired up. I need a drink. You have any questions, you can put them down there in the bottom. I need a freaking drink before I run through this freaking wall. Anyway, we're going to move on. So back on the nutrition side of things, you know, tied into all this, tied into learning from your mistakes, tied into the failures is this 10-day project I've been working on for probably close to the last year on myself. I go through these different phases. I change different parameters. I constantly tweak it. I put myself through this 10-day advanced nutrition and training beta test that I've been working on for close to a year. So I did a, a photo shoot in May. No excuses! No excuses! The kid's a freak. He's a freak show. He bounces off the walls. He runs through walls. He bashes his head off the walls. I can't imagine where the hell he gets it from. Anyway, so I did a photo shoot in May where I used this 10-day this project that I'm working on. That was about the, the third or fourth time I did it, and each time I tweak little things to see different outcomes that come from it. I'm on it now for like the fourth or fifth time in the last less than a year. So in May, I got myself using this to the lightest weight and into the best shape I've been in my life, the lightest weight I've been in since high school. I was 169 pounds. Yes, I fucking graduated high school. I may have had to allegedly threatened my freshman art teacher when I was a senior because I had no art credits and she was going to fail me because I showed up about five times all year and I never did one freaking piece of art. You know, but I stood there at graduation. The person in front of me went. I stood there. I was sure they were not going to call my name. They called my name. I was shocked. I couldn't believe it. So I went up. I got the diploma. Then I opened the shit up and it was empty. I'm like, they're just fucking with me. They didn't even give me a diploma. They called my name just to make me look like a fool. But then I realized I don't even put the diploma in there. So yes, I graduated high school. Anyway, I weighed 169 pounds for that photo shoot, the lightest I've been since high school. Immediately after that, I wanted to fine tune this 10-day program and even take it to the next level. Every time I do it, I try to tweak it, make it better, see what works, see what doesn't work. This is all about that whole failure thing we're talking about. This is exactly what I do in my own fucking program. The shit I put my through, through myself just to try and learn one little thing. Each time I do this 10-week 10, 10 program, I change one little tweak. And then you have to take two months off of it and do it again for 10 weeks or one month off, or 10 days, sorry. So I'm constantly doing this, testing this out, trying to find out the best strategies at work. This is how we come up with all the things, all of our nutrition strategies that we come up with, is I test and beta test the shit out of this myself, and then eventually I move it on to a group of people, and then we move it out onto all of you. 
So I put on 26 pounds since I did that photo shoot in May and we're only now at the end of June. 26 pounds I put on purposely because I wanted to, st I started the next round, the next test with a couple little tweaks. I'm trying a couple different things out yesterday on this 10 day program. So we're going to see where I'm from, where I go to. So I was 169. Yesterday I was 195. 195 yesterday from 169 that I just did in the end of May or whenever that was. I think the end of May. It was the end of May. So 26 pounds from then. The, 10, the new 10 day program started yesterday. I'm going to see what the results are, what happens with the different changes that I made and we'll see what happens with that, with that 10 day program. The to I'm testing it out with different results under different conditions and I'll keep you updated on the results and the outcome over these different scenarios that I've been testing for the last six months or even really up to a year technically. Been trying some things out, tweaking it and if it works the way I expect it's going to be a freaking amazing quick tool for people to get quick results. You know you have an event coming up or something like that. It's, it's going awesome so far. It's, it's worked every time and it's gotten better and better every time. It's a very advanced and specific training pro protocol still being tweaked but it will definitely not be for everyone like that Game Changer program. It's kind of something we would probably implement into that Game Changer program taking things to the next level even for them. You know, if it even do does come close to the effect that I'm expecting this will be an amazing tool in our, our advanced toolbox. So I'm going to go through quick right now. We're just going to go through the, some of the, the different topics we did in previous episodes because a lot of people ask me things all the time and I try to refer them to an episode. So I keep track of it. It's all obviously we outline it all. So episode one was just uh, telling my story. Episode two we were talking about the core values. Episode three was about what's your why? Why are you training? Why do you want to get to where you're, you're going? And also we talked on that day about gossiping little bitches. Number, or episode four was, what was episode four? It was about not, not giving a fuck and having a, 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 strong, a mentality. There's a lot of mental, uh, mindset type stuff mental, mentally. It was about exercising with injury, soreness and exercising at an older age. But it was also that, that pit bull mentality which we talked about which was on our logo. How it related to our mentality of how we do things. And not giving a fuck about the things that don't matter. That was in episode number four. Now, episode number five was about where the hell has Steve been and it talked about how our process of adding more sessions, adding more classes, duplicating and replicating our training style and making it work for everyone and making sure you're getting the results and if you want to know where the hell Steve is, show up Friday 5 a.m. and 6 a.m. I'll show you where the fuck I am. We'll see what happens there. That should be fun. Also that in episode number five we talked about the, the biggest factors holding people back from reaching their goals. Some of the factors which or some of the excuses, sorry, which were, which I call them, was money and time and motivation. We went into that. Then episode number six we talked a lot about our trainers and the way we train our trainers. Then what were some of the other topics? Episode number eight was uh, d revealing secrets again. It's always about mindset stuff taking us to the next level. It was, that was episode eight. Number nine, I'm not sure, I think number nine was about a fundraiser. Number 10 was the two most effective pieces of equipment for weight loss and the most effective supplements for weight loss and a ton of stuff on mindset. 10 was a good one for mindset. You're looking for mindset stuff and the thoughts and making your thoughts a reality. That was episode number 10. Number 11 was talking about meal plans and I think protein bars, no, protein bars number 12. So episode 11 was talking about six week challenge, beginning, new, new, new members joining the gym and meal plans. Number 12 was then frequent, frequently asked questions. Different questions people normally have when they first come into the gym. It was talking about the most important client which should be yourself and it was talking about the difference in protein bars. Episode number 13, the main topic was how much protein do I need. Episode number 14 talked about alcohol and how to get a six pack. Six pack secrets for exercises, supplements, if you remember that one. Number 15 was self development and persistence. Episode number 16 was Taking, it was anxiety and taking action to overcome the anxiety. Episode number 17 was jealousy and teamwork which is what overcame comes the jealous motherfuckers out there which there's tons of them out there all the time. They're watching you and then today is you know, what we did, what we talked about today and that's it. If you have any questions you can put them in there in the bottom. We have about 15 minutes till the next training session starts. We can get over it. If you have any questions, put them in there quick. If not, then I'm going to see you next time. Don't. For, oh, and if you are a member in the private Facebook group, tomorrow, I think tomorrow, I'll give you the time, either tomorrow or Thursday, I'm going to do a special, very short, whatever, 10 minute Facebook Live in the VIP group. You do not want to miss it. 
I'm not going to keep it saved in there. So after I record it, I'm not, it's not going to be there. You do not want to miss it. It's going to be a pretty big kind of contest type thing. Some pretty important stuff you guys are going to need to know about that I need all of your help with and involvement in. It's going to be a big deal. So it's going to be a Facebook Live just in the VIP group. If you're a member, that's going to be tomorrow or Thursday. I'll post it and tell you the time. I got to check to see what time it's going to be. So recapping today was, is there a question there? Something just flashed on there. So recapping today, we were talking about the number one thing that was holding you back in taking your game to the next level once your game results and that was self-sabotage and why you're self-sabotaging yourself and how to overcome the self-sabotage. The way to overcome it was by failures and learning from your freaking failures. When is the next Game Changer program? The next Game Changer program, if there's enough, it will be in less than two weeks. I'm looking at July 8th as the first meeting for it. If there's enough interest in it, we have enough people that want to do it, then we're, we're set to do a whole new round of it right away. So if you guys have enough interest in doing that Game Changer program, you've seen some of the crazy results. I actually just posted some today and yesterday, some of the videos and results they had. Like I said, this is the type of stuff. This type of stuff about these self-limiting factors, these freaking self-sabotage, and failures and learning from your failures and most importantly is those daily rituals. This is what we do, this is how I live, this is how I live my life. I basically show my secrets what makes me operate on the levels that I operate on 24 hours a day. That's what the Game Changer program is, to bring you onto that level in your life which is then gonna give you crazy fitness results in general. So if there's no more questions, then that's it for now. If you have questions, put them in there, I'll answer them later and I will see you later.